So now we're going to have an exec panel where we're talking about accelerating AI and HPC in the cloud. Joining us, we have Ian Coley from Amazon Web Services. Let's give him a round of applause. And we have Matt McKee from Rescale. Let's give them a round of applause. And as our host for this panel, we have Augie Burkick from the Intel Corporation. Th thank you very much for joining us again for a second fire chat. I mean, I was just talking to Ian and Matt here. This is the best showing on a supercomputer that I've seen over the last many, many years. So it's nice to be among the, the friends, old friends and new friends. Mm -hmm. So I'm looking forward to continue these discussions over the next four or five days, three, three to four days. Uh, the session before was great. They talked about the supercomputers, how we build them, how we scale them, how we solve the sciences. That's one way to implement HPC, which is on-prem fixed solution. We're going to talk today a little bit more about how we build these solutions in the cloud. So we have a couple of uh, partners here that are doing this for a long time, and we're going to have a discussion what challenges they see. So Ian, uh, a lot of our customers are moving some of the HPC workload mm -hmm. in the cloud. Uh, they see opportunity to explore you know, levels of scale you can mm -hmm. offer, but also some PCO benefits. Can you tell us a little bit more about what opportunities these customers have, how you service them, what challenges they're trying mm -hmm. to try to address. So that would be great to tell us a little bit more about it. Sure. And if any of you out there have an opportunity to wear one of these, you definitely should do it. <laughs> because don't we look awesome? Come on. <laughs> um, it's, it's really exciting to see what our customers are able to do with the power of Intel hardware on AWS and at the scale of cloud. And what I see our customers asking us for is, how do we solve these hard problems? I mean, that, that's what this whole show is about, right? Is how do we solve the hardest problems that whether scientists or engineers are trying to solve? And the reason I think it's so appropriate that I'm sitting here in the middle is because what our customers are doing is using the amazing infrastructure that Intel is providing us for our multiple instances. And they're using the usability of partners like Rescale to connect the cloud on AWS to solve those difficult problems. And so I think this is a great three-way partnership and I hope you'll hear more from each one of us about why it's so key that not, able, not only are we able to provide the cores when a customer needs them, but in a manner and in a location and in a way that they can take advantage of the scalability and the elasticity of the cloud. And that's what these partnerships are so key to. And that's what I think our partner, I mean, our customers are taking advantage of is the fact that we have the scale to provide customers the resources they need right. when they need it. It's not like they have to make a commitment for five years, watch it amortize, gradually replace portions of it. They are able to segment their work elastically so that they can apply the computing resources that they need at the time that they need them to solve that portion of their workflow and then shut them down while they're only paying for the resources that they need at the time they need them. That, that's great. And, and, and that gives them flexibility to decide mm -hmm. uh, you know, how they plan their on-prem mm -hmm. and off-prem and cloud. You know, the, the hybrid model is mm -hmm. becoming a lot more popular these days where again, Matt, your, your purpose is to connect those you know, off-prem and on-prem and your flexibility is amazing and scale. Uh, I mean, talk about large, large number of cores. I mean, what shows that uh, award you got there that uh, it's really impressive for HPC for the number of cores you're hosting mm -hmm. in the cloud. Uh, we live in the world where AI uh, is exploding. I mean, it's a, another iPhone moment, right? It's everybody's now thinking how to react to the uh, AI. But there is this model of AI augmented HPC where AI is being used mm -hmm. to help HPC work on simulations to get faster to solution. Mm -hmm. Um, and then one example Rick was talking about here is that they're doing analysis for the drugs, looking at the compounds, is that like 80, 80 billion of different chemical mm -hmm. compounds to create drugs. So how we use the inference to reduce the problem set to a you know, subset of them that are really useful and get to the, these drugs much faster and you know, serve, serve the human population. What do you see? How do you see uh, AI augmented HPC in, uh, in, a, in the cloud right now? Well, it's a perfect example that you just discussed is when we're looking at screening potential compounds and, and since Augie set me up there and, and I, I just have to brag a little bit about this, uh, this is a award that we just received from HPC Wire for best use of HPC in the cloud. And let me read it because 
this is why this is this is emblematic of this partnership. The Dana Farber Cancer Institute developed a computational platform for drug discovery, completing its largest HPC run using 5.7 million Intel-based virtual CPUs running on AWS, using the Virtual Flow platform to identify and create a library of 70 billion molecules that might be used to treat cancer and other diseases. This publicly available library speeds research safely and effectively by identifying candidates in days versus months. So this right here is just an example of the power of the scale of the cloud and the power of Intel-based CPUs. Thank you, that's, that's amazing. I really uh, appreciate you reading the complete story because it's important to highlight you know, how, how the technology and partnership bring that value mm -hmm. to, the, to, the, to the science and to the, you know, creating the really good thing, creating drugs versus cancer, mm -hmm. that's, that's amazing. I'm super proud of that. Um, Matt, why, why, uh, um, let's go back a little bit more mm -hmm. to, the, to the instances. Uh, recently, you launched a, a new instance in the cloud. It's mm -hmm. called C7i. It's mm -hmm. based on fourth generation of Intel scalable mm -hmm. processor. But what's cool about it actually has accelerators, a bunch of different accelerators that you're using to accelerate some of these unique workloads. Can you tell me a little bit more how, how are you using those accelerators, how they add value, and how they create the benefits for your customers? Mm -hmm. Well, for our customers, it's all about how do you optimally use the hardware that you've got for the moment in time? Because again, as powerful as the CPU is, it's really that entire environment. And that's one of the things that Intel is really known for, right? Is for the entire Intel stack, all the way from the kernel up, whether it's using Intel MPI or now these various accelerators that we've seen is powered by our C7i instances. And what we see customers doing is really taking advantage of these to accelerate their workflows and I think Matt could give us some perfect examples of where their customers have been able to integrate that. Yeah, uh, happy to. I think uh, the most powerful example, uh, also to speak to some of the impact we think AI is going to have, uh, to go back to your question earlier. That's right. We're seeing this impact of like the very physical domains also, mm -hmm. right? So being able to train models off parameters, being able to train models off geometry. I think that uh, we've got some really exciting uh, developments that we're going to see over the next five years. So just listening to the luminaries that preceded us mm -hmm. and what our customers are looking at, very practical ways to actually do that work in a scalable way inside of an enterprise organization amongst an uh, organization of 2,000 engineers. How do they bring all these different techniques in a very scalable way uh, to their methods, uh, to, to develop new methods in their environment? And then specifically with uh, Intel's new infrastructure with C7i, we're seeing enormous impact in performance gains in, in the very practical workloads of finite element analysis and computational fluid dynamics and, and um, like quantum espresso for like materials development um, and um, amazing gains uh, that we're seeing from our customers and the power of the platform that AWS is providing us enables the customers to immediately switch. As soon as these new uh, infrastructure is available, we're able to immediately transition these workloads with, with uh, virtually no uh, switching costs, if you will, or friction from a user base to immediately be able to implement uh, new technology that Intel's rolling out. So it's always the best uh, is available to customers and there's a, there's a huge demand for speed and performance. Um, and customers are able to take advantage of every single new iteration of technology that Intel's able to bring to bear uh, on AWS Cloud. That's, that's great, that, that's the value of the cloud. You're putting the latest and greatest technology so it allows immediate access to them through tools that Leescale provides. T T Matt, tell me a little bit more about, you know, you, you have this wonderful platform that connects different clouds and manages the control plane. W what do you see from our customers? Like, how, how are they, are they exciting? Are their workloads moving to that hybrid model? Are they moving more to the cloud? Uh, how you manage that complexity? Because you have lots of good examples and, and, and platform is very solid. So I think when customers see a cloud like AWS, they see an enormous amount of power, mm -hmm. right? There's just enormous amount of scale and power available to them. And there's a ton of choice that's available to them uh, on AWS. Um, and sometimes that it's about the practicality of bringing all the different elements together that are needed to make that like an enterprise environment. Um, and so that's the problem that Rescale is solving to make that uh, kind of a zero friction. And then uh, there's all these uh, opportunities that when you're building something, anything cloud native, you have all these opportunities to innovate on what has come before you. Um, and so taking everything from the workflow to the software libraries to scheduling mechanisms can all be informed by new cloud-based technologies. 
So we had a chance to kind of re-envision um, how to do that. But we're very, very focused on the practical application of high performance computing. Um, we're very focused on making those workloads come to life and making them easy to deploy uh, within a, a customer's environment. And that's where Rescale's seeing some exciting use cases from automotive development to electronic design automation, semiconductor design, um, to drug discovery uh, in the life sciences. So, and that's where Rescale really focuses our time. Thank you. And I'll, I'll just toot yeah. Matt's horn a little bit more. Is one of the power of having a partner like Rescale is that we as AWS are, are often known as building for the builders. So we take the wonderful infrastructure and the cores that Intel provides us, and we throw a box of Legos out at customers. And some customers really like putting together Lego sets, and they love having specific colors and shapes and sizes and exactly tailoring it the way they want. And some customers look at that box of Legos and go, what am I supposed to do with this? And so that's where the, the real power of a partner like Rescale, because they can come in there and help those customers that are saying, I've just got a job to get done. I've got a specific application that I want to accomplish that I know that Intel will be the best chip for me to run that on. But can you just take care of the rest? And that's where I think they really shine is in yeah. their ability to optimize a specific application for an architecture and to simplify it in a way that the customer, it takes away all that heavy lifting and they just focus back on what they're trying to do, which is to solve that problem that will get them to the next step in their workflow. That's, that's right. It's all about solving customer problems, it's like removing complexity and making it simpler for them to use it. Uh, the last question, I mean, uh, this is a great discussion. There's a lot of new trends coming up in, in the cloud. Uh, there's the data being generated at the edge, moved to the cloud. There's the HPC at the edge, there's the HPC in cloud. How you see the modern trends evolving and how you see function of cloud and, and control planes, software like three skills to kind of evolve and solve future problems? Well, I think we, we touched a little bit about an AI and the previous panel was on AI and we're gonna continue to see AI integrated where appropriate into HPC workflows. Um, you can s continue to see a real demand for the power of accelerated computing and how do accelerators fit into your workflow. And I think quantum, we have the question of quantum out there, where is quantum appropriate? Uh, and that's one of those questions that I think is still a scientific question. Like we're, there's still, we're still trying to figure out not when this is gonna work, but if this is gonna work. And when I think the ability to modularize your workflows that comes from a cloud-based architecture is that ability to say, is this portion of my workflow appropriate for quantum potentially in the future? Then maybe I should keep an eye out on that and try things like AWS Bracket, uh, our own quantum service, or to try out different services. And then when it is a reality, then you can apply quantum to that portion of your workflow. But I think right now, we're still trying to see if quantum is viable. Yeah, and that, so and to talk about where we see the future, I mean, I was just reading a latest a study from McKinsey where they, they see a 66% like uh, growth in simulation and modeling, for example, for the enterprise over the next five years. I mean, that's an enormous amount of virtual development. We all think it's like what everybody does because everybody here at this conference is keenly focused on helping customers do that. But there's actually a lot of customers that are still in early stages and kind of just like virtual development, virtual modeling and simulation um, areas that Rescale focuses on is some, in some ways is actually, you know, at nascent stages in certain parts of real practical application um, in the enterprise. So we're gonna see enormous amount of growth there. And some, just as the preceding panel talked about, AI may be the only way to actually contend with that growth, mm -hmm. right? And so right. how do enterprises actually, and this is what everybody's struggling with, how do they practically apply those solutions like within their organization because it's you know there's a lot of buzzwords that are uh being thrown around right now um like in the industry is here not here <laughs> but uh as a whole and so but they're very looking for very practical solutions and there's an enormous amount of growth and so that means either all the data centers are going to get bigger by 66 percent right um, which is maybe amazing for aws that's great um or we're going to have to find new methods and make those methods practical in a very very short amount of time so I think that that's the exciting, uh, some of the changes we see coming on the horizon. Fantastic. Well, thank you very much for joining us today. I mean, our partnership is strong and it's going to grow over time. I really appreciate you sharing your view and uh, 
where we are on this journey. So looking forward to work with you in the future. And thank you for helping us put this fire chat tonight. Yeah, thanks for having thanks, us. Thanks,